Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back Show, where intimacy is real. If you desire to intimately connect with yourself, your significant other, children, family, friends, community, and higher power, this show is for you. We explore intimate topics, inspiring life stories, spirituality, and insightful tips on strengthening relationships. The show is hosted by Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Let's get this episode of the Bringing Intimacy Back Show started. We share with you today the secret power to intimacy to create a life you love or love the life you create. Now, here's your host, Dr. April and co-host, Coach K. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back Show, where intimacy is real. How are you doing, Coach K? I'm doing amazing. And how about yourself? I'm doing great. Yes, yes. And happy um, belated Valentine's to all our listeners out there. Absolutely, yes. Yes, yes. This February is a wonderful month of love. Um, also, it's a, woman, it's a month of um, Black History Month, which is just a great thing. And today we're going to be talking about being good enough as parents or partner. And as I think about that, I also just think about, just because I also said Black History Month, about the impact of all the mothers before us. You yes. know, just thinking about how my great grandma, my grandma, my mom, and me. Yeah. And, you know, just with the Valentines, thinking about did you give yourself that love so that you could give that appropriate love to the others? Yeah. You know, I even wrote a quick article about it. It's so important that. First hear and then share that love with with everyone else, especially your little ones and your partner. Right. Definitely. And if you didn't give yourself that self-love, it's never too late. You know, I tell some clients that to write a love letter to themselves, because the more you take care of the, yourself, the better. Oh, my gracious. Yes. And and speaking of your the your mothers and the grandmothers before us. They weren't always given that space. So being able to appreciate that it's okay to outwardly do that in today's world is everything. Appreciate. And I'm not talking about long, long ago. (laughs) You know, thinking about a mother and a grandmother, that's not long, long ago. So appreciating the fact that it's okay now to love you and spend time with you to give to others. Appreciate that. Right, you mentioned like a valid point because a lot of our mothers and grandmothers did not have time to take care of themselves. And they just work, 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 helped other people, helped families out the community. Yes. And so now in this fast paced culture, we're trying to do the same. Um, yes, but we're burning out because we also have additional pressures that they didn't have as mothers. All right, like social media. <laughs> Yeah, like social media, even the simple aspect also of just traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kids went to school in their local neighborhoods, you know? So now, yeah, so many mothers try to put their kid in everything. Mm-hmm. So, yes, yes. So I am so excited that we have a specialist who's coming on to um, inspire, teach us, show us the way. Yeah, I'm really excited about this discussion. Yes, yes. So we're going to later on meet Dr. Susan Lanters, and we're going to meet her. She's a specialist, and she's a full-time professional who also, as a mom, and she struggled to raise three children, but she did, and she's going to teach us different ways of how we can manage stress. But before we get to that, um, this month, we're also doing the charity of the month, which is a great thing. It's called the Random Acts of Kindness. Mm, which is always necessary. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And just thinking about mothers and stuff and random acts of kindness, um, what happened this week is we, um, a group of us who are part of a church mother kind of thing, we went to a restaurant and we um, ordered meals, whatever, and we just um, gave this woman, this young mom, a lot of tips just to help her out. That's beautiful. That's yeah, awesome. She was, she was so shocked. 
So that was great. But if you're out there and you're thinking, I don't know what to do, think about Random Acts of Kindness, a wonderful organization. Mm, I like that. Yes, definitely. So when we come back, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to speak with Dr. Susan Landers about good enough parent and partner. We'll be back in a moment. A must-have for parents-to-be, first-time parents, empty nesters, and parents all around. There are infinite ways to parent a child, but the trick is trying to figure out the best way that fits you and your child. Create strong connections during pregnancy to not pulling your hair out during the terrible twos, navigating puberty, and having adult conversations with your adult children. The Intimacy of Parenthood covers it all, and it is now on Amazon, available in Kindle, Audible, and paperback. Welcome back to the Bring an Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. Welcome, Dr. Susan Landers. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation. I am looking forward to our conversation. Yes, yes. You've been um, instrumental in all that, what you've done. And can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, I was a neonatologist. I practiced medicine in the neonatal intensive care unit for 34 years. I have treated thousands of uh, critically ill babies, premature infants, and I have loved every minute of interacting with their families. Intensive care medicine is fun and rewarding, but interacting with the families really made it worthwhile for me because these are babies that are very much wanted, usually unexpectedly premature or ill. So I enjoy my career as a neonatologist. Um, I also had three kids along the way, and that was a big shock. (laughs) Most of us go to medical school and residency training and learn how to do everything doctors do, but nobody teaches us how to be a working mom. And I like to talk about how much trouble it is to learn how to do that I had so much trouble in my first 10 years trying to be perfect. I was in academic medicine. I was doing research projects. I was raising two kids and then we were having a third. And I learned the hard way that I had to take care of myself and I had to make choices about the priorities in my life. I didn't start out knowing how to do that. I was very fortunate to have a wonderful physician husband. He and I talked a lot of medicine. We both had high stress jobs, but we actually were able to create and maintain a really good marriage. And um, we're both retired now. Our children are all adults. Um, Two of them are married and my oldest daughter has two kids. So I'm now a grandmother. And I love that even more than being a mom because you can sort of check out and go home (laughs) once you're done with the babysitting and the helping. So I have had a wonderful career and I loved my life as a mom. I don't think it was easy. I think being a working mom these days is very, very difficult. And I like to write about that and post about that because I think working moms nowadays have this notion like I did that they're supposed to do everything perfectly. They're supposed to be able to do it all. And right. that is so not possible. Right. <laughs> yes. And I think, um, I know for me, um, I was looking at the moms of the eighties and they seemed like they had it all. Mm-hmm. That's what they seem oh. like. Yes. Yes. There was even a commercial that said, bring home the bacon and fry it up in the pan. Uh, it was a, it was a, a uh, fragrance commercial that told us we could be super moms. And it was like, okay, I'm going to go out and be a super mom. Right. You, you were fed that, that you could have it all. Yes. Right. And you said that um, you learned it the hard way. Mm-hmm. So what did the hard way look like? Just because there may be people out there that are yes. not even knowing that it's the hard way that they're doing it. Sometimes I would carry my stress home from work And my husband was a great barometer. He would say, don't you need to go take a walk or go for a run or something like that? Um, Sometimes I would uh, forget 
to have a lot have lunch with a friend. I wouldn't stop and take more than 10 minutes for lunch and sit down and visit with a friend and share notes. Um, sometimes I just got so involved with everything I was doing at work that I worked more hours than were necessary. Mm -hmm. So the things I learned first were I had to exercise to maintain a good mood and my energy. I had to de-stress and my husband was the best at helping me do that. And I had to rely on my friends. I really felt so isolated sometimes if I didn't chat with them, talk with them, have lunch with them. Um, that's, this was way before iPhones, thankfully, because I think we did a better job back then of sitting down together and talking instead right. of texting and looking at our photos on Instagram. So yeah. I learned quickly that there were certain things I needed to do to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just talking about potty training and bedwetting and sibling rivalry. And there were no internet um, information sources like there are today. So we had to use each other for experience and for guidance. And I think that really helped me a lot when I was a new mom. Right, right. And you mentioned um, mood and energy. And I know for me, um, as a young mom back in the day, when the energy, when you come home and you get you extra work and you have no energy, you get, um, for me, sometimes it used to feel like your skin is crawling when your kids are grabbing on you. Right. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about Coach Kate, because I know you have five. How was it for you? Uh, I went through a, a very tight time and it was with number four that I had to, I had to stop in my tracks and say, I need to wing back. And it was one day when I was working two jobs, I was on my way to the second job and my son grabbed my leg as if he would never see me again. I cried oh. on my way to work and it was that day that I decided home gets me first. Mm -hmm. work gets me next. And I've lived my life with that philosophy ongoing. That is so wonderful. I had a similar experience around the age of 40. We had moved to a new town. My husband got a great job offer. We had just had our third baby, uh, third child. And my job was okay. New NICU, new hospital. Uh, so I left all my friends behind I got busy working too many hours and I neglected to take care of myself and I became depressed mm. and through my recovery from that depression, I'm not actually sure if it was clinical depression or working mother burnout, but it was enough to stop me in my tracks. Like mm. you say, I had to uh, meet with a therapist and talk about my issues and learn that I wasn't even on my list. Mm. I had forgotten to put myself on my list of priorities. I was running around taking care of everybody, new house, new schools, new teachers, new job. But I had forgotten that I was important, that if I didn't take care of myself, I couldn't keep the rest of the family afloat. So that episode stopped me in my tracks. And I was forced to reevaluate my priorities. As you said, Kay, kids came first, job came second. I think, well, I, I don't think I ever put myself first. I think I put my children and my husband first and my job up there kind of tied with my husband. But I did learn to put myself on the list. Yes. Well, I, I definitely, I'm queen of putting myself first. Um, uh, many people in my world don't get it until they get it. Mm -hmm. But and, and my children will tell you, oh, we know you come first. And I, uh -huh. I need them to understand that because if I'm no good, right, I'm no good for anything. And especially for them. So true. Mm -hmm. Right. And it teaches them, I think, also that importance of self-love, taking yes. time for self. You know, when you say, hey, I, I need some moments for myself you know, just to take a bath, hang out with friends and that kind of stuff. Right. 
I had a son who liked to go running with me. Uh, he was like a preteen. And that was really wonderful because we had moved to a new city where we lived out sort of out in the suburbs and there were lots of rolling hills. And so we, we actually got out several days a week to run outside. And that's when I discovered that being outside in nature was such a crucial way to take care of myself, not just exercise, but getting outside. And I even did things like playing softball with my kids in the neighborhood. I did things like that. When I wasn't at work, man, I was tuned in to things that made me feel better, gave me free time, uh, gave me more time with my children. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love to hear you say that you were out playing that softball because. Oh, yeah, I love it. Right. It, just, it, it oh, made yeah. you feel just free. <laughs> it's wonderful. Playing with children is the best. My youngest still remembers I taught her how to play T ball. Mm -hmm. And my son remembers I taught him to throw and catch. My husband's kind of a nerd doctor type, and he's not an, a sports person. So I was the one that was outside with the kids running around and playing games and riding bikes. And I loved it. It has always been one of my methods of filling up my cup. I don't know that I did very many bubble baths. I did with the girls, but I sure <laughs> did a lot of playing outside. I found playing outside to just be really up there for me to feel energized, spirited, um, actually settled, if right. that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It did really any, worked for me. Yeah. Did you, any of you get backlash from your jobs when you were putting your kids first? I know I was working at a school and um, my daughter had something to do. And I was like, I cannot be there. And this was like a Saturday or Sunday, I can't even remember. And I had a female boss who told me, well, you're not really here for the kids. or you're not here for kids. or you're not a kid person. And I'm like, I have my own kid too. <laughs> yeah, but I know that women get that pressure. Yes. Especially in corporate America, because I've worked corporate also. Yes, yes. And I'm not sure if in the medical field, if you had that pressure of, I did. Um, so my second job, there were women in my group and they were pretty willing to trade off and cross cover so we could get to each other's school functions and things like that. And then when I moved to Austin, my kids were all in elementary and middle school. Um, I joined a group of nine men and all of them were married to stay at home moms. And they these were all lovely women, but these men were so used to having everything done for them. And one day I came in and I said, could somebody cover for me? I've got to go see a school play or talk to the teacher or whatever. And they looked at me like, what? I said, guys, don't you ever go to school and talk to your kids' teachers? No, our wife takes care of that. And I'm going, okay, so somebody covered for me. Then I asked them if we could change the start time for morning rounds. They were used to starting at seven in the morning. And I said, hey guys, I'm really having trouble here. I can't get my kids fed, up, dressed, fed, and on the bus and get to the hospital by seven. Can't do it, it cannot be done. Can we start at eight? And they all looked around going, well, we've never started at eight, that's too late. And I'm going, okay, could we just try it? They tried it. And guess what? Three of them came up to me within a couple of months and said, I kind of like seeing my kids before they go to school. Oh, It was awesome. It was <laughs> such a, a wonderful accomplishment. And ever since they went through that with me being the first woman in their group, they hired two more women. Now the group is about half women, half men. And our practice was known for being family friendly. So I like to think that I kind of started the momentum of giving women the ability to say, here's my boundary. Right. I love to work and I'll work hard, but I'm not going to miss certain things that I'm capable of being there for. And I feel like I was a trailblazer in that way. And a lot of my younger partners who are now in their 40s with kids in middle and high school say, I'm so glad you whipped these guys into shape. And I'm going, well, it wasn't a whipping exactly, but they did have to learn how good it was to have 
time for family activities. That is definitely awesome. I've, I've worked with, well, they were veterinarians, but doctors in the past. And I, I see the pressures of yes. caring for patients and then having to sometimes ignore home. So when I see them on Facebook and now they're, they're having families and it's like, oh, my babies are growing up and they're spending time with their families. It's pictures of families, not, oh, another shift at work. It's family. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think they're I think we're all figuring out that that balance in life is what's important. I, I know that's kind of a corny term, work life balance, but and I'm I this is coming from a workaholic. I have always been an overworker, overachiever. But if you do not have family time, family life, time with your kids, time with your husband or partner there is no balance in your life. You're just married to your job. You know, I had friends that were married to medicine um, who never saw their kids, who were only in the lab and worked 80 hours a week and got all the big NIH grants. And I thought, well, that's their life. But that, that wasn't a healthy life for me. I had to balance how much I worked with how much time I spent with my children and my husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can't go back and get it. You you no. cannot go back and get that time, but you best believe that job will continue on mm -hmm. while you're trying to search for that thing that you didn't do back then. <laughs> right. And those family moments for children help them develop relationships, help them learn how to compromise, you know, help them understand what quality time is and that connection. Yes. That you know, intimacy of being fully present. So yes. yes. Yes, it is wonderful as I look back on it and I'm having the best time enjoying watching my older daughter be a mother. She has a two-year-old and a six-year-old. And I just, I, sometimes I just sit there and smile and watch her and as she's interacting with her kids, whether it's difficult or pleasant, I just savor the moments because and she looked at me one day recently. She said, why is being a mother so hard? I said, oh, honey, it's just the way it is sometimes. And you'll get through it. You're doing a great job. You're you're right where you need to be. And she said, I know, but I, I wish I could feel better about this. I said, you're working a full time job. She's a pediatric ICU nurse. You have two children. She's working on a master's, get her nurse practitioner degree. Wow. She spends at least three days a week with her children and doing other things, trying to take care of herself and be a good wife. I, I told her, I said, you are right where you need to be. This is a full life. Mm -hmm. You are, have pushed it as far as you can push it. And it's okay. She said, mom, what do you think if I pull back, maybe only work part time? I said, Right now, while you're working on a master's, that's a great idea. Pull back one less shift a week. That is perfect. And you'll be able to breathe. And later on, she said, boy, that made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, sometimes we don't know when we've taken too much on our plate. But I no, think I think I knew. Yeah. Yes. But it took me a while to figure out what the feeling was. Exactly. The feeling was being too wound up, being too too overdone, being too pressured. Right. And, and I think I learned to kind of read that barometer. And as I said before, my husband was always wonderful at saying, you seem a little frazzled today. <laughs> or I mean, he would, he would say, are you okay? It, it was, he would, he really had a talent for that. And he was one of these laid back guys, you know, everything is fine. And, <laughs> Uh, every day is a new opportunity to have a good time in medicine. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, because in the NICU, things are kind of exciting and yeah. emergencies and things like that. So I had to learn to de-stress. And he helped me recognize when I was overly stressed. I think the, the fact that you didn't pushed your daughter further into that, that hole that she could go in, that most women, and we do it unconsciously. You yeah. got this, you can do this. 
you know, while we're trying to encourage, we don't realize that we're pushing whomever it is that sought, you know, our help support. We're pushing them further into a place where they really don't have it. And they really just needed somebody, especially a mother, to say, baby girl, if you need to pull back, it's perfectly okay. Yeah. I know you can do it, but you don't have to at this time. So dial it back. So that's that that means everything. Yes, I was so proud of her, really. I, and she can't I I didn't say a word, you know, I just knew she was working a lot and and in school and two little kids and a husband and she figured it out for herself. I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So as women are out there listening and maybe they're feeling burnt out, what kind of tips could you give them? Burnout is serious. And being whether you're just stressed out, whether you're tired, whether you're emotionally overwhelmed with work or family, I think what burnout tells us is to take a break, get some space, step back. There is no way you can figure out what to do and what's contributing to your overload unless you get a little space and think about the issues. Talking to a good friend is very helpful. Talking to a coach or a therapist is icing on the cake. But I think a mom can do it if she's feeling burned out by talking to her partner or her husband, talking to her very best friend, confiding in them what she's feeling and allowing those people who love her to say, you're right, you are, you are doing too much. You are overly stressed, you are overwhelmed. So the first step is to actually be self-aware. Mm -hmm. to actually know that you got yourself in this pickle. Um, I did that because a partner came up to me once and said, are you okay? And I went, what do you mean? What's wrong? <laughs> he said, you're so cynical. Have you lost your compassion? And I went, oh my God, maybe I have. What's wrong? And I went home instantly and started talking to my husband about it. One of my partners noticed this. Maybe I was too short with one of these dads and this baby is so difficult. And my partner and I sat down, my husband and I, and, and he said, well, what's bothering you? And by talking with him about it and kind of making a mental list, I was able to get at what was overwhelming me. Then I started to do regular stuff to take care of me. I started to ask a friend to lunch and talk and laugh and tell stories. I started to exercise more. I started to get outside and walk in the neighborhood. I picked up a hobby, uh, needlework. I like to do cross stitch. It's very calming, very meditative. And I made myself do these things two or three times a week and I noticed that those things started to make me feel better. I noticed that what I was doing was taking care of me. Right. When in fact, what led me to be burned out was taking care of everybody else. Yeah, I definitely. And so the first thing is you have to be aware of where you are and what's happened. The second thing is that you have to figure out what makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. now, sometimes it's a job change. Some people are so miserable they can't stand their job and they need to change jobs. Sometimes it's a difficult child or a child with special needs or a marriage that's in trouble. All of those things count and all of those things add up when we're working full time and raising a family. It all rests right here on our shoulders. We all carry it around. And if we don't dissect it to figure out what our issues are, there's no way we can fix it. Right. Right. And um, I was just thinking of those single moms and even single dads out there who maybe do not have a partner. Yeah. Yes. It's really great to have a support system whether it's well, best friends, 
And let's say if you don't even have any support system, then maybe starting to create one, whether it's joining groups, churches, you know. Yes. Other than yeah. I asked one of my best friends who was divorced when her daughter was two. I said, how did you do this as a single mom? I just can't even imagine how, how you could work this hard. And she said, we trade it off. Right. I would pick up somebody's kid. They would pick up my kid. I would watch sick kids. She would watch mine. Uh, my mother-in-law helped a little. I said, so you just called in your troops, right? And she said, right. yeah, right. I did. It's exactly right. what I did. I didn't have a husband or partner to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was really lucky because I always had a partner that was very helpful. And when he wasn't helpful, he didn't mind too much if I reminded him how I needed help. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yeah, but definitely, like you said, having support. And then the yes. other thing I was thinking of that is so difficult as moms, because I heard this from one of my clients recently, you don't get the thanks. No. When they're little, when they're preteens, <laughs> you know, yeah. See, I had a mother. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm doing all this. I stopped my job for these two little ones. And they're just, yeah, yeah, just being a, you know, a mess and all this. Yeah. So at home, we don't really get the thank yous that we no. do at work. No, we don't. Oh, we come don't. one day. This years <laughs> later, decades later. I think we do from, I did from my husband. But and and because I told him, I you know, here I am, I'm in this situation, I want to be the perfect mother. That's not possible. So I'm aiming to be a good enough mother. The concept was out there, and I embraced the concept of being a good enough mother because I wanted to work full time. I liked being a doctor. And I also wanted to raise my three kids and be involved with their lives. And so I figured out slowly that to be a good enough mother, I had to be willing to miss some things, not the big things, mm -hmm. be willing to let someone else look after my kids, yes. be willing to ask my partner for help when I needed it. And he was good about saying, you're doing fine. You're, you are a good enough mother. If I would complain, oh, I missed the so-and-so. Oh, I wasn't at this this party or this soccer game or that swim meet. He said, you're at 90% of them. Give yourself a break. You're doing fine. He would actually give me the feedback that I needed. And I bet, April, you could get that from a friend as well mm -hmm. or from a parent or a mother-in-law. You could get the feedback that you needed. But it takes saying to someone else, am I doing okay? I mean, uh, can you give me a little feedback? I'm feeling just a little shaky here, like my daughter saying, Mom, this is so hard. And I think we need to be willing to say to our friends, this is hard. You're doing a great job. You're doing everything you need to do. Are you taking care of yourself enough? Uh, don't ask so much from yourself. So learning to be a good enough mother is really hard for a lot of working women. We expect more from ourselves, I believe, than we are capable of giving. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, if people are out there listening and they want to find you or get to know what you do, tell us a little bit about how we can reach out to you. Uh, my website is um, SusanLandersMD.com. I'm on social media as Dr. Susan Landers, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I also um, write a newsletter. I have some resources on my website. Um, I just love being able to have the time now to write and to support working mothers. So um, please check out my website and there are lots of free resources there. I've written a couple of eBooks and it, in addition, I wrote a memoir after I retired. Wow. My book is called So Many Babies and it's available everywhere books are sold. Okay. So thank you for asking.
Yes, yes. Well, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Oh, this has been fun. Yes. Okay. This has been the Bringing Intimacy Back. We'll be back in a moment. Are you wanting a vacation in paradise? Vacation to reignite the passion, the desire in your relationship? Vacation counseling is just for you. We are deeply committed to your success as a couple. Our couples counseling retreats are exclusive, effective, and intimate. At Vacation Counseling, you will benefit from a combination of couples counseling, intimacy counseling, and individual counseling while you and your partner enjoy a relaxing vacation in sunny Southwest Florida. If you are interested in Vacation Counseling, please visit us at vacationcounseling.com for more information on prices and packages. Welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Back Show where intimacy is real. Yes, that was so um, uplifting. It was. Um, I, I felt that someone needed to hear that message today and, and ongoing just to remember that it's okay, number one, not to be okay, and number two, to be a human being first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, and to take time for yourself. Yes. To love yourself as much as you love everybody else. Oh, absolutely. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and we have some um, some more upcoming great shows that's going to be a, a valuable resource. Um, so on, and this month is going by so fast. I say that at the end of every month. I guess it's only four weeks, but wow. So on uh, February the 23rd, we have Survive to Thrive, How to Get Intimacy Back After a Narcissistic Relationship with Woman Warrior, Christina. On March the 2nd, we have Life After Death with Tina Irwin. And then on March the 9th, we have, um, I told y'all once before, something special coming for you guys. So make sure you're tuning in for that. Um, and then on March 16th, we have Losing to Winning Relationship Strategies with Nancy Pickard. Really good lineup coming up. Yes, yes. So exciting. So thank you guys so much for listening. And if you were um, inspired by anything we said or, or even with our guests, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And definitely talk, check out Dr. Susan Landers and her her information about being a mother, the struggles of motherhood, and just being good enough, as that's all we can be in this world yes. today. Yes. We will see you guys next week. This has been the Bringing Intimacy Back Show, where intimacy is real. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. You can also find us at bringingintimacyback.com, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Dr. April Brown's seventh book series, Improving Intimacy, is now on Amazon. We'll see you next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Don't forget to follow, share, and subscribe.